These are the Legacy Studio HD loudspeakers. Priced at $1,800 in standard finishes with upcharges for more exotic veneer options and the like, I'll be judging them as a more serious option that matches their price of admission. Crafted in 1 inch thick MDF and weighing a hefty 31 pounds per speaker, they are built like a tank. Measuring 13 inches high, 10.8 inches wide, and 10.8 inches deep, the HDs are a pretty large bookshelf, and having a solid stand will be important to get the most out of them while keeping them safe from tipping over. Designed with interesting angles, and to avoid internal standing waves, the Studio HDs will incite conversations of people either loving their looks or the exact opposite. I for one dig the design, and with the white finish, I think Legacy has put together a very attractive loudspeaker. On the inside, Legacy has thoroughly braced the Studio HD, and never in my listening sessions was I able to detect the resonance of the cabinet making a mess of the studio's sonic presentation. Driver complement on the Studio HDs consists of an air motion tweeter on top and a substantial 8 inch woofer down below handling bass and mid range frequencies. The woofer driver is constructed of woven graphite and exclusive to Legacy's designs. Crossed over at 2800 Hz, this driver is playing quite high and my suspicions are that the material of these drivers plays an important role on preventing distortion. Also worth mentioning, the basket on the woofer is incredibly thick and well made, making this driver a far cry from some other cheapies I've seen tossed in some designs at or around their price point. The type of tweeter being used is a 1 inch AMT or air motion tweeter which squeezes air as opposed to moving back and forth or vibrating to create audio waves. Being my first speaker to feature this style of tweeter, I was excited to see if what I've experienced at shows with legacy statement pieces might pass down some of their DNA to the HDs. On paper, AMTs are said to offer speedier delivery and do this with ultra low distortion while avoiding ringing like a bell which some soft dome tweeters can suffer from. Swinging the speaker back around and looking at the back, the Studio HDs are a ported design and I'll let the cat out of the bag early. Its tuning sounds very natural and clean. Bill did a phenomenal job with avoiding the temptation of aggressively tuning this port which can lead to boomy, unnatural sounding bass extension. When it comes to the binding posts, Legacy gives the option to buy amp the studios for those who want to kick things up a notch and play with different amplification options. Also, the binding posts don't stop with buy amp capabilities. Evidence of why and how is found in the two back switches, which are filters that give the option to make some adjustments to the speaker's overall response curve. One toggle allows you to trim two decibels at 10K, and the other, 60 Hz for the lower frequencies, handled by the woofer. Yeah, the Legacy Audio Studio HDs look pretty serious, and there is little to no doubt that at the price of admission, they better sound good. And with a warm welcome back to New Record Day, that, my friends, is exactly what we are about to find out. The Studio HDs might be the least picky speaker I've ever had in house. While I wouldn't suggest less than 12 inches from the front wall, these really worked well in just about every location I tried and seemed to lock in right around 24 inches from the front wall and 3 feet from the side walls. I prefer the Studio HDs off access, but your mileage might vary depending on how much top end you like. Which leads me to mention, okay. The Studio HD's top end is very detail oriented and the air motion tweeter is appropriately named. Air, lots and lots of air. Cymbal hits and anything that is struck with a drumstick will come across as very precise. Speedy? Yeah. The air motion tweeter is wicked fast and I'd make the argument that it keeps pace with the likes of planar magnetics and even ribbons. Dropping the needle on Ben Howard's Every Kingdom and playing Old Pine, I was hearing all the tone on this record my Ryan R610s offer, but there was one key difference. The Legacy's top end sounded more forward and unbelievably crisp. As an analogy, if you ran the Ryan's top end through a Brita filter, you are close to what I am experiencing with the Studio HDs. 
I suppose the argument could be made that one is more natural sounding than the other, and while I'm not interested in creating a debate, I'll just say that folks who find themselves falling asleep to whatever speakers they are listening to, the Studio HDs will surely wake them up. For listeners who might be sensitive to listening fatigue or prefer a more classic British sound with a rolled top, I'll do Legacy a favor of saving them unnecessary RMAs. If you aren't catching my drift, stay tuned for the follow-up video where I'll record some samples. Tossing on Madeleine Peru's Half the Perfect World, the studio sprang to life with razor-sharp focus and vocal delivery, and the woofer's voicing perfectly matched the tone found in their AirMotion tweeter. For those who are seeking lots of meat on the bones, I would make the claim that the mid-band of the studios swims on the other side of the pool. Meaning, if you want something campfire warm, I don't think these will necessarily win you over. Now, if you want precise, if you want detailed, the Studio HDs will organize and divide every single note being played with stunning clarity. When it comes to male vocals, I grabbed Nirvana Unplugged and made my way through the record. Kurt's voice was presented with presence and stunning definition. As the record progressed, I was never having a hard time guessing where he was on the soundstage, and even when harmonies kicked in, I could clearly identify each and every single person in the mix. Smearing or smudgy mid-band slipped by unnoticed with the legacies, and with the top-end air motion tweeter filling the space of each and every note in the mid-band, I was left with a performance that sounded live and believable. Now that I think about it, over the last few months that I've had these speakers, anything recorded acoustic seems to shine. Bottom line, the most salient attribute that I discovered in my time with the Studio HDs was their level of detail retrieval found in the mid-band. Perhaps the most difficult thing to get right on a bookshelf is bass, and Bill has done a fantastic job with the Studio HDs. Does this mean the HDs will drop serious bombs? Well, not exactly. Having accurate bass as opposed to more bass is always more important to me, and the bass pouring out of the studios is quite accurate sounding. Focusing on the bass of the Studio HDs with Ray Brown's Solar Energy, I never found anything bloated, boomy, or overdone. Each note of the upright minus the lowest octaves was detectable and tonally correct. At the end of the Ryan R610 review, I made the claim that any other bookshelf headed my way better have their big boy boots on. Being in the same price bracket of the Studio HDs, I need to commit to that conclusion. First, the Studio HDs are worthy of their asking price. It's my belief that folks out there who define hi-fi as being able to retrieve every single detail to be found in recordings and appreciate a lively top end will discover many positive attributes the HDs have to offer. The fit and finish is superb and their aesthetic appeal ranks high marks here at New Record Day. While I personally prefer the R610's overall signature, I'll speak with authority in saying the legacy stepped into the ring and were not defeated in round one. Blow by blow, the HDs continued to unleash their airy and crisp top end, followed by an accurate presentation of all things bass. While everyone out there will have to make up their own mind on what they want out of a speaker, it's clear that while the studio certainly won't rival what I have heard in the Legacy V system, I am reminded that the cost of the V system is a cool $50,000. Even still, there does seem to be some kind of trickle down tone or if you will, a legacy. Yeah, a legacy that can be heard lurking in the soul of the Studio HDs. And yes, many listeners will appreciate that.